I'd like to welcome everyone to this year's third, this is third, uh, and yes, final briefing on the use of robotics uh, in STEM education. Uh, as a graduate of Georgia Tech with a degree in chemistry, STEM education is an issue that is near and dear to me, and I'm very happy to see a large number of people, particularly students in attendance who share this interest. I'd also like to take a quick moment to welcome our special guest to today's briefing, Dean Kamen, uh, inventor, physicist, STEM education advocate, and our keynote speaker, no stranger to breakthroughs in robotics. We can credit Mr. Kamen with the invention of the Segway, launching the first for inspiration and recognition of science and technology robotics competition, starting uh, DECA, D-E-K-A Research and Development Cooperation. I know that our attendees here today are looking forward to his insight, uh, which you've already heard, on these important issues. Uh, I would also like to welcome Crystal Johnson, the Executive Director of the National Science and Technology Council within the Office of Science and Technology Policy uh, at the White House. Before assuming her current role in November of 2008, Ms. Johnson served as the Assistant Associate Administrator of NASA. She has an extensive background in STEM education by holding a bachelor's degree in physics from Lincoln University and a master's in electrical engineering from Penn State. Ms. Johnson will be able to provide you with a wealth of knowledge. Lastly, I would like to welcome a group of fellow Georgians today, the Facite Alliance Robotics. It's a collection of 40 robotics teams that participate in almost every robotics program available in the area. Located in Forsyth County, Northeast Georgia, and chaired by Rick uh, Folia, the Alliance works with students at all levels to get them engaged in STEM education and to continue that interest throughout their academic pursuits. STEM education represents such an incredibly important component of our ability to stay at the cutting edge of this global economy. Yet the United States, and we all know, is falling behind the rest of the world in the number of students that are graduating from STEM fields. Let me uh, give you some numbers. According to a 2006 Association of American Universities study, 50% of students in China receive their undergraduate degrees in natural science uh, or engineering. In Singapore, that number is 67%, and 38% South Korea's graduates fall into those fields. Unfortunately, the United States is lagging behind with a staggering 15% of our graduates in natural science or engineering. During the 110th Congress, I believe that our nation took a very crucial step to address this issue in the America, America Competes Act that was passed on a bipartisan basis in 2007 and was signed into law by former President Bush. Uh, as the former ranking member of the Science Committee's Technology and Innovation Subcommittee, I was proud to support that important legislation that will make STEM education a priority for both the short and the long-term future of our students. Robotics plays a very important role in furthering STEM education, particularly at early ages. Providing students with the ability to get a hands-on learning experience can provide them with the tools to keep them engaged in STEM fields with the hopes of those students pursuing higher education opportunities and careers in those cutting-edge fields. That's why I applaud program like, uh, programs like Mr. Kamen's first competition uh, by putting in place these intellectual avenues for students to explore. I earnestly believe that this program, along with the many others around the country, can be used as a stepping stone for broader use of robotics in the classroom. Like each of you, I wholeheartedly believe in the potential that robotics has for the future of STEM education in the United States. Uh, I want to thank our very distinguished panel uh, for coming and educating us on these important issues. Uh, most importantly, I want to thank all of you for attending today's briefing and supporting the work of the Congressional Robotics Caucus throughout this year. Uh, I hope to see you again at our briefing series next year. And again, I thank you for letting me squeeze in and present some of my remarks. Mike Doyle and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy co-chairing this uh, Congressional Robotics Caucus. We will continue to work with you uh, to 
make sure that uh, we're, we're there with uh, legislative initiatives uh, and we listen to you because, as I said uh, in these remarks, uh, we, we cannot compete globally uh, unless we improve upon these numbers, 15% compared to these other countries. Some of them developing nations, uh, we're going to remain hopelessly behind. So this is a, a, an ethic of uh, work, everything that we can put into it. Thank you all very much. Proud to be with you today. Thank you all.